Good evening and welcome. Welcome to That's the Law. I'm B.J. Krinsman. It's good to be back. We haven't done a new show in quite a while. Um, but we are now, believe it or not, in our 28th season of doing this show. And I'm still an attorney in Newton, and it's, it's just good to be here and good to see you guys again. Over the years, we've had many, many guests and some one-shot deals and one-time guests. And then we've had what we call, I call my recidivists. And tonight we have one of my recidivists. And join me in welcoming Representative Kay Khan. Kay, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Kay has been on the show. I, I have statistics for you. Oh, you Kay, <laughs> yeah, Kay has been on the show uh, at least six times before, six that I could locate. My prior uh, producer, Laura Johnson, helped me archive all the shows, and I came up with six, sometimes alone, sometimes with other, you know, with Ruth Balls or with um, Senator Cream. So you're one of my recidivists, and actually, your, your first appearance okay. I have is December of 1998. Okay. All right, so you were fairly was, new rep. Yes, I was fairly new. I came in in 95. I started in 95. Which means you've now been in office for 20... This is my 29th year. 29th year. It's hard year. to believe. <laughs> Fabulous. And your most recent appearance before this one, and I, I'm going to remind... I remember this distinctly. Your was February 25th, 2020. Now think about that okay. date. Yep. February 25th, 2020. And we did the show, and then we usually go out for dinner afterwards, and we went to O'Hara's. And we got to O'Hara's, and O'Hara's was strangely empty. It was very, very mm -hmm. sparse. And I knew exactly what was going on. And I said to Kay, Kay, well, you know, it's really empty here. And she said, oh, maybe people are vis busy with something else. or you know." Something, whew. and I'm thinking this is COVID coming because I was just fresh back from the West Coast where it was. It had started in right. Washington D.C. and Washington, the state of Washington. So I was sort of much more aware <clears throat> of of the, this was COVID. So that's when our our last show was. Well, it's interesting you mention that because uh, I was in a caucus in the Massachusetts House of Representatives. Um, in, at the end of February 2020, so it must have been after the show, and we were sitting there talking, it was like tw uh, February 28, 2020, and we were sitting there talking about transportation. We were heading up to vote on a bill on transportation, and I started texting the Speaker's office saying, I don't know about you, but I'm sitting here worried about the the co this COVID that's coming, the virus that's coming, and they said, oh, no, we're not going to do anything about that. We're not going to talk about that today. Oh. And maybe the Public Health Committee will do something. And I'm like, it's coming. <laughs> and, right. I, and after the caucus, I went to the speaker, <clears throat> and I said, it's great that we were talking about transportation, but what about the virus that's coming? Yeah. And he said, oh, no, no, I hear you, I hear you. Well, that was February 28th. March 9th, everything closed. That's right. And they just didn't want to think about it. It was really interesting. The, I know that. And I remember talking to my son. I was in California, talking to my son in California, mm -hmm. and saying, you know, I'm really worried about this virus. And i got to get on an airplane, because I came back from the West Coast like February 18th. And by the way, I had gone, I had taken my son to the dentist, and while I was at the dentist's office, February 18th, uh, or before February 18th, I said, do you have a mask I could take? Now, of course, I was the only one on a right. plane who you right. know, was thinking about putting on a mask, and I didn't because I was embarrassed, but this, it was right. all happening. And I remember my son saying, oh, it's two cases in Washington. Right. And I said, it's, I, was, I was the KCON out there. Right. I said, it's coming, it's coming. Well, yeah. it's interesting because when I turned around after I spoke to the speaker, uh, there was uh, John Santiago, who's a physician, was standing right behind me. And I said, John, what do you think about this? And he's a doctor. Okay? <laughs> We've joked about this together. And he said, oh, no, it's just going to be like the flu. Yeah. And that was February 28th. Right. March 9th, I went into the legislature on March 9th. March 9th they had meetings on my bills and um, went back to my office. I went with some of the other staff with me. And then we went home. And then it closed. Everything closed. Uh, yeah. And then I get this notice from the speaker's office that somebody was that I was exposed to someone that somebody yeah. had been 
And so then we, we right. were like five days waiting to see if we were going to get, get it. it. So it's, anyway. Abso oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. And the world is now, history is divided into two right. sections, which is, be and how I think, you know, when I'm trying to think of something, did that, when did that happen? Right. It was it before right. the pandemic exactly. or after, right? right? Pre or because, post, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So anyway, 29 years um, that you've been a rep. I've been doing my show for 28 years. And I have to ask you, why now? Why you, <laughs> what, oh, what, I, let me just say, you'll get to talk eventually. <laughs> well, I, what I just want to say is that I hadn't done some shows for several months. And it was when I read that Kay Khan was not running for office. Mm -hmm. uh, you sent out a newsletter or something, not, not going to seek reelection. Mm -hmm. I said, what? So I knew I had to. I said, "Will you come on and do a victory lap?" I wanted to have oh, you on again. That's so, really lovely. So and yeah. and you got me back into the studio, oh, which <laughs> and I'm enjoying being here. So I'm, I'm glad this happened. So why now? Well, this is my 29th year, and um, I think and it, it's really a, a, with mixed. It's a mixed blessing, really, basically, or what, whatever they say, um, because I I really love the work. I love being in the legislature. I love um, I. I had, for example, uh, in January 2023, I filed 45 pieces of legislation. And on, Ju on February 10th, 2024, all the bills have to be decided on in terms of whether they're going to continue or if they're going to be put into a study. And 33 of my 45 bills each got extensions or moved on to the next committee or the next uh, stage. So now I have 33 bills, and the you know the the session really ends. The, the formal part of the session ends on July 31st, 2024, and so now I'm struggling with all these bills. You know, which are which are the main priorities that I would like? I would like to see some of these get done. They're bills that I've been working on for a very long time, and so I'm just hopeful I can get something done, for a few done before the end of this, the, the formal part of the session. Well, what happens if you, uh, you you'll have a successor? Someone, right, someone right. else will be. So, did they not continue your work, or did, did all the bills just get erased that you? Well, I'll be looking for people, you know, to make, take on the bills, and obviously yeah. people that would be interested. Right. So that's something that I, you know, will try to work do. on. Yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Do you want to tell us what some of them are? You know, I was going to do sure. history, but I think we ought to do yeah. what's, what's happening now. Well, um, yeah, I have some bills that I'm really excited about. Um, I've been working on um, electrification. You know, it's a climate bill, the electri electrification of buildings. So my bill, I've been working with Ann Berwick, who is uh, the s sustainability person for the city of Newton. She was Deval Patrick's energy person. And so we've been working together now for several years. And this bill, it's a very simple bill. It just will require that all new buildings and major renovations will have to be all electric. So Meaning we're no to get fossil it, fuels. Right, is that the to get idea? It, totally get, getting rid of fossil fuel. So that's a bill that I'm really um, excited about. I don't know what's going to happen. And uh, well, Are you getting pushback from the oil companies <laughs> or the, yeah, the, the coal right. industry? I yeah. don't know. Well, I mean, it's I mean, it's the wave of the future. I mean, we are moving in that direction. And uh, in fact, in the last session, uh, there are so they decided that ten communities could move forward with this. And so communities had to put pull their stuff together and apply to be one of the ten communities. So we do have ten communities, including Newton, that are um, allowed now to move in that direction. Um, there are certain things that they have to go through before they actually get the okay right. to go. I know Newton is, has a few more things that they have to do. But I, I th it's a pilot, and I don't think we need a pilot. I'm for just doing it because the pilot, um, the, the cities, that are, cities and towns that are in the pilot are more sort of middle, upper middle class communities. We need to be looking at the EJ, you know, the environmental, uh, the communities that are, are more you know, in difficult situations, much more lower on the economic level. And you've got all these huge buildings and you want to electrify them. And it's safer, it's healthier. And, um, you know, we shouldn't be using fossil fuel, fuel anymore. And we know that in these large old buildings, you know, there, there's gas, there are gas stoves and right. young people living there who are, you know, the, we know that they're not healthy and you know, it's not a healthy thing to be working with a gas stove if you're going to redo your right, kitchen right, get right. rid of the gas you know so 
Um, so that's a bill that I've been working on, and I'd like to see something happen with that. And uh, so I'm, I, I'm going to be meeting with the chair of the committee on environmental, uh, who does all the environmental work, to see if I can get something. Now, is, you're a sponsor of this bill, yes. or, or, or do you have co-sponsors? I, I have a couple of co-sponsors. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, good luck with that. Any, right. any other bill right yeah, now? Yeah. Well, I have another bill. Newton. We won't go through the right. 33. Right. Right. <laughs> No, I have um, another bill that, I'm, that I've been fighting for for quite a long time is to get rid of, uh, it, it, a lot of these bills are also to protect young people. So this is to get rid of dietary supplements and uh, muscle building products to get them behind the counter in stores uh, so that young people aren't reaching for those. They, ha they would have to show an ID to be able to get them. So it's not getting rid of all these products but most of them are not FDA approved and they have things in them that are really dangerous. And it's also, we've, through all the research, we know that they can lead to eating disorders. So this is about really helping young people make the right choices. Now, why do I think, we've, we've established that we, the last time you were on was 2020, February of 2020. I thought we talked about this then. You, have, have you been working on I've been on working on it this? for a long time. Yeah. 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 So I filed this bill in 2015. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. see, this yeah. particular bill, um, we've improved it, uh, but it was the first time it was filed was in 2015. Right. And <clears throat> I'm working with um, uh, a person who is connected with Harvard Harvard School of Public Health and Children's Hospital, and has done all the research. It just passed in New York in New York State, and it's being looked at in other states across the country. But this is to protect young people, and it's about how it can lead to eating disorders, and that's a terrible situation for many people. How do you get your ideas for bills? I mean, d does it come from other jurisdictions that you'll hear something that happened in Wisconsin that sounds like a good idea for Mass Massachusetts? Or well, you know, actually, <clears throat> a lot of things come to me from my constituents. And in this case, um, way back, I had a constituent come to me who was very concerned about a granddaughter who was had a serious eating disorder, was in the in and out of the hospital, and so he just brought it to my attention. And, and I'm a nurse. I forget, you know. I, right. So a lot of my work is really having to do with healthcare, and um, so when he came to me, and I was familiar with this. I'm a psychiatric nurse. I'm familiar with you know eating disorders. <clears throat> I put together a small group and started to really look at what was out there in terms of being able to protect young people. And um, I worked with um, Health Law Advocates, which is, a, uh, an, uh, which is an organization that does a lot of work in, around healthcare. And uh, so we, we set up this little task force. And so the, the, that bill <clears throat> was really looking at medical necessity because insurance companies were not coming forward to help people who had an eating disorder unless they dropped to like 70 pounds then they would, the insurance would cover because they'd have to go into a hospital. Right. So that bill, I was working with, with other experts on, who, were, who were very familiar with this um, issue, and that bill was moving along, but it wasn't going far enough, and it was just kind of stuck. And then I had this uh, woman come to me, Bryn Austin, who's connected with Harvard School of Public Health, and um, also came with, um, so there's an organization in Newton called NIDA, it's a Newton Eating Disorder Association. So they came to me, they suggested that maybe change our strategy, change the bill and go forward on this, the whole issue around dietary supplements and uh, muscle building products. So we, they wrote the bill <clears throat> and so that's what I've been fighting for. That's how, yeah. Um, we're talking with Representative Kay Khan who has announced that she is not <laughs> seeking re-election so we're kind of we're doing, yeah. uh, we could have called it the farewell tour or we could call yeah. it the victory lap, but she's here with us. Um, you mentioned that yeah, we all know you were a nurse. Right. Um, did I ever ask you how you decided, yeah, you made the leap from being a nurse to going into politics? <laughs> um, no, I don't think you ever, I don't know. You might have asked, I don't know. 20 years ago, <laughs> I might have asked. Right. Yeah, 20, yeah. Well, um, yeah, so, I mean, it's a long story. I won't go into it, but... Uh, when I moved to Newton, I became very involved in, you know, my kids went off to school, so I joined the PTA, PTO at the time, and now I think they call it PTO. 
Um, and I got, I, I just sort of got in, more involved and someone suggested that I join the Newton Democratic City Committee, so I did that. And then I got involved with, you know, helping candidates run for office right. and it was a very active uh, right. city committee. And, and then, then I went on to, um, you know, I had, I was, I have three children, they're in school, I was busy. I, then I went to graduate school. And I, I got a graduate degree at the U School of Nursing in psychiatric nursing, and and then I thought to myself, well, maybe I could bring healthcare to the legislature yes. because I was okay. you know, meeting all these people that were running yeah. for the legislature or for Congress or for other you know other um, positions in government, and it just kind of came to me maybe I could take healthcare. I knew there were a lot of lawyers and business people up in the legislature, but I didn't think there was anybody focused on healthcare. So. All right, Kay, you're not fooling me because I think being a psychiatric nurse, you, you said to yourself, they're all crazy, <laughs> right? These politicians right. are all nuts. Right. I better go in there and straighten them right. out. Come on, that's what really happened, <laughs> Well, that's right? what people said. You're in the perfect place. <laughs> so one of your um, areas, your mm -hmm. focus areas that you have said have been family issues and health issues. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I have here chair of the Mental Health Legislative Caucus that you, <laughs> you were doing that. Public health, chair of the Committee on Children, Families, and Persons with Disabilities. What, have there been some highlights you can tell us about your work in that area? Uh, well, first of all, I think I, I would just like to mention one thing, and because I, I think a lot, like, how did I decide to do any of this, as you asked? And today happens to be my mother's birthday, and <clears throat> she would she would have been 110, which there are still people around it, you know that age. <laughs> but the thing about my mother, which I guess you know I hadn't thought about it, I was thinking about it a lot today, is my mother actually got very involved. Uh, she became the president of a, my father was a physician, and so she joined the, in those days it was the Women's Auxiliary to right. the Mass Medical Society. Right. And um, so she became the president, and she wanted to do a project. So she worked with a doctor over, or a physician over at um, Tufts uh, School of Nutrition. And uh, so together they really came up with this whole idea of the importance of kids having breakfast. And so she actually testified in, in front of Congress, Ed Kennedy, Humphrey, in a, it was a committee about the need for children to be able to have breakfast before they go to school. And so she was really instrumental, I think, and early in, in that effort. So I, I think all of these things probably add up in some way that uh, inspired me to, to really yeah. move in that direction. And, so the one thing that's fantastic in the legislature is that you get to do so many things. I mean, right. you get to, I mean, there's so many caucuses that, you know, I started the mental health caucus. I started the task force on women who come into the criminal justice system. I did have the opportunity to be the chair of the Committee on Children, Families, and Persons with Disabilities for 12 years. And so you, you really get a taste of all the needs and all the things that are, are, are important to be thinking about. And, trying to create ways to help yeah, so many endless, people. Endless, endless. And it, it right. keeps, keeps going. <clears throat> any highlights, any accomplishments you're particularly proud of in that area? So well, I've done a lot of work on, um, in terms of health care. Uh, one area is nursing. So uh, I think I've made a difference in terms of um, really getting, lifting the whole um, profession of nursing so that now uh, because of the work that I had done, I have done um, all advanced practice nurses. So those are nurses with a master's degree or a PhD can practice independently. So they can open up their own practices now and and um, and practice independently. So that was a big thing. Yeah. And uh, one of the first groups that I was able to um, help uh, do that were the midwives, uh, because midwives. Um, you know, they work in hospitals. They're 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 masters or doctoral prepared. Uh, they deliver babies in hospitals, and so this was this e this effort was to uh, move them further along so that they could practice in the hospitals independently. So in 2013, that bill passed, and so nurse uh, midwives, nurse midwives, have been able to practice independently um, in hospitals since 2013. Uh, and now, along, to move that even further along, now this year I have a, I have legislation to um, about equal pay for equal work, 
and because the nurse midwives are really doing exactly the same thing as the obstetricians are in terms of delivering babies, but they're not getting paid equally. Are they, is, is it third party provide, third party payers that mm -hmm. you're trying to get to right. parity? To, to parity, pa yeah. right, yeah. yeah. So that's a bill. I mean, the nurses aren't doing C-sections and, and um, surgeries, but in terms of delivering babies, it's, it's the same. They're doing the same. So we're trying to work on sort of parity with, with um, the physicians. Well, so. good luck with that, right. because I think yeah. where the health insurance industry is coming from is whatever the lowest level pay worker right. that they can get to do something. <coughs> and that was sort of having nurses do but they're what doing doctors exactly had the same done. Work. I, exactly. Well, I, can, I understand. And they can have their own practices now as well. Right. I and understand your argument, yeah. but it, it'll be interesting right. to see if the right. healthcare industry right. goes along with that. Yeah. So that's one. Um, I mean, I've worked in so many areas. Really, it's uh, yeah. healthcare, mental health care, um, juvenile justice. I've been um, instrumental in, for example, back in again back in 2013, I was able to raise the age, which I was mentioning before because um, anybody, any kid who gets into trouble with the law, um, it was that if they were under their 17th birthday, they could, would go to the juvenile system. But if they were above the 18th birthday, the, uh, the 17th, if they were 17 you know, on, after their birthday, they would go to the adult system of the prison. And uh, so the whole country was kind of looking at that. And, and the state, the, uh, on the national level, it came down that they would like to see that change. And so I was able to do that in Massachusetts. So now it's looking at, so anybody under the, age, under the 18th birthday stays in the ju juvenile system. Juvenile but if you're system, 18th yeah. birthday and over, you go into the adult system. And we think that's still too young. So this legislation that I've been working on again for years to raise that age <clears throat> so that we're looking at even maybe 19th birthday or 20th birthday, because there's been so much, uh, so much research about the brain and we know that kids, you know, under the age of, uh, you know, young, uh, right. probably under the age of 24, 25, don't make the right decisions. Uh, and their, their, their frontal lobe closes later, and uh, that's their reasoning power. So we do know that we need to be doing something, I think, right. to raise that age. And I did a show. I had Peter Katujan on. Mm -hmm. He's the sh sheriff of Middlesex. Okay. Uh, I think you were on the show also with, I don't remember if you, oh, maybe you, you were on when he was a rep from, okay, uh, right, from Newton yeah. with him, but I've had him on the show since he's become Middlesex Sheriff, right. and we've talked about diversion programs and sort of right. everything <clears throat> to avoid just this awful incarceration right. Right. early on when they don't, the kids are unconscious, you know. Um, well, we need to be thinking about all of that. Yeah. <coughs> I'm sorry, my voice is, <laughs> something's wrong with my voice. Have some water. Um, but we need to think about that because we really want, I mean, the whole issue around incarceration because most of these people are coming back out and you want them to be prepared. You know, so we're, I've been working on better education in the prison system. So we right. have all of the colleges around here in Massachusetts and probably even all over the country are going into the prisons and, and providing education uh, for prisoners because we know the research shows that if you come out of prison with a college degree, the recidivism rate drops to under 3%. Yeah. So it really behooves us to, to move in that direction. Right. So there, there is a lot of interest. And so I've been pretty active in that as well, trying to, uh, I, I've been able to get some funding so that the Department of Corrections can hire someone to sort of coordinate all the education issues and needs. And did you get involved with uh, juvenile girls in the justice system? This is, I, I know that um, Sh uh, Sherman, I can't think of her, her first name. Oh yes, Francine. Francine Sherman. Right. Um, she was very, she's been on the show too. She's been, been right. very involved in that. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, you know, when I was the chair of the committee on children, families, and persons with disabilities, right. the Department of Youth Services was under the, um, the human services. Well, you know, just to wrap up this part of the, of the discussion, under criminal justice reform, I ticked off some things which were you had giving kids a second chance, mm -hmm. expungement, mm -hmm. uh, no mandatory minimum sentence for low-level drug offenses, severely restricting solitary confinement, mm -hmm. expanding access to diversion and restorative, right. and restorative justice, right. which is fabulous, mm -hmm. restorative, and I wish we did, we did more about that. Yeah. 
So you've been involved in all those things. Right. Yeah. yeah. Anything of their stand out <laughs> to you, what you did? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, well, there, we have, uh, we've had for a long time, we have a caucus. Um, it's a criminal justice reform caucus, and I've been a member of that for years. And, and it's wonderful because we come together, we bring people in to speak, um, either even some of the folks that have been in, in the prison system um, to speak as well. So we, there's a lot of work being done on the whole issue around criminal justice reform. Yeah. And so I've been very involved in that in, in many different ways, including young women, uh, the, you know, girls, and just raising the age, for example, was a big thing, because girls are also uh, in that age bracket that can get into trouble with the law under, under the age of You know, it's such a good idea to have a nurse be part of our political uh, legislative system, and you've brought such a good voice um, to this. And is there anyone else who has any kind of background who's in the legislature currently that's close to yours? Well, I would say that, you know, there, there's a lot of interest in these areas. I mean, I just moved in that direction. In fact, being the, the chair of the Committee on Children and Families was like perfect for me because right. as a psychiatric nurse, but also all of those issues, all, the, all of the health and human services issues really um, just kind of fit with, with the way I think and what I would like to see happen. So. That was a, an incredible opportunity. And uh, so because all these agencies, like the Department of Youth Services and the Department of Developmental Disabilities and the Department of um, uh, Children and Families, it all comes under uh, that, that committee. And so it was a great opportunity to learn what the needs are. I've been very actively involved in homeless situations. You know, I have yep. legislation related we'll, to that. And we'll get into that. Well, you know what? What's going on here is that we, we always do a half hour show. But tonight, Newton, we're going to do actually an hour show, but divided into two halves because there's just so much you've done and so much that we have to. Um, I want to go over all this with you, and it's it's so. And how do you encapsulate a 29-year <laughs> career in a half hour? Right. Can't do it in an hour either, but we're going to try. So what we're going to do is we're going to well, well, we, what, we, what we do in in law courts is to say we'll suspend. So <laughs> we'll wrap up right now for this show, but we're, uh, uh, this segment, but we're going to have part two um, with Kay Khan and her, her, part two of her victory lap. So I hope you will uh, stay tuned for part two, and we will s see you next time. That'll be the, the, the second part of the show. We'll see you then on That's the Law. Thank you. Thanks, Kay, for well, coming. Thank and, and thank you for agreeing to do, do part two. And we'll see you next time on That's the Law. Thank you. <laughs>